1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 6 through 13. Verses 6 through 13. And continue to pray for Pastor Shrive. Continue to pray for Pastor Shrive. You know, keep him in your prayers. And also, Mrs. Shrive. All right? Don't forget about you know, preacher's wife. So pray for Pastor Mike Shrive and Mrs. Shrive and the family as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. Now these things were our ensamples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmur, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh, he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is come unto man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Brother Richard, can you pray for the message? Lord God, thank you for another day of salvation for us to come. Brothers and sisters in Christ, to worship you as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for all the burdens that you have bestowed upon us that makes us become a better person. For us to not turn away from you nor stray away from you, but all the temptations that we go out and about and have and receive, so that way we may grow closer to you. We know that all the issues and problems that you allow to happen to me, I know that it was for a reason and for me to grow more towards you and allowing me to fellowship with my brothers and sisters more so than ever. I thank you for that, Lord God. I pray that you be there with Pastor Jay, guide him with the Holy Spirit so that he may preach unto us your words from the Holy Bible and allow him to convict us and prick our hearts yes. of all of our sins so that we, be, we may grow closer to you, Lord God. We pray that for all the sisters and brothers that are not here today, please be there with them in spirit. And for the ones that are here, allow us to have a ear to hear and a heart to, to accept all the words from Pastor Jay. Amen. Thank you for all your blessings. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 It's always bittersweet after having a mountain high top experience and coming down to the valley. You wish you were able to be up there forever, honestly. Think about it. During summer camp, you, you praise the Lord. You listen to great preachings, you eat great food, and you have fellowship with people. I mean, you get right with the Lord. You get right with your own folks, right? You know, I, I have to give credit to our young man at BBCI. Pastor Gene's church had many people already preparing for popcorn preaching. You know, they were already set. And something moved me, and I said, you know what? You know, our young men could do it as well. And because people are going to get blessed out of it. They were literally told less than 24 hours. And they preach not for themselves, but they preach, you know, for the edifying of the saints, but for the one purpose of bringing glory to God. And Brother Caleb preached on forgive. Forgiveness, and that, that, that resonated. I mean, Pastor Stevenson used it, you know, and Brother Josh about children, Brother Nathan about you know, philosophies of this world. What it means is that 
know, when you leave that mountaintop experience, even if you weren't in that mountaintop experience, there's always question that comes up, which is a title of the message. You know, now what? Right? Now what? You have gone through and you have experience, quote unquote, we're not like charismatics per se, but Lord has blessed you in many, many ways, many different ways, spiritually speaking, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally. And at that time, what happens is that devil will really get to work. Devil will really get to work when something good happens in your life. Devil will really get to work when you think that Lord has blessed you very, very much. This verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, is something that you have to live by on a daily basis. I'm not sure what you did after you came down from your campsite yesterday. I mean, did you go back to any of your old ways? Did you turn on your TV and start looking at the old things that you weren't supposed to? Did you start listening to music you weren't supposed to? Did some temptations that griped you right away where, man, I just came down from the camp. The most godly is places probably you could be at at a certain time because, mind you, we sang for three hours for night one, Amen. but nobody fainted. Praise Everybody God. wanted to praise the Lord more. Yes. Amen. Amen. All hell, Emmanuel, with that, you know, people would just go run up and down and praising the Lord. And we honestly wanted more time to praise the Lord. But when you come down, you're here now, you know, whether you are at the camp or not, you're here. Everybody's here. Do you still have that same zeal or do you still, you know, think about those spiritual things that you've learned from? And anybody here, as you live your Christian walk, there's going to be always devil's attack. And how are you ever and how are you dealing with it? When we see Israelites, which is our examples in our you know, text today, they had to deal with idolaters, you know, they had to deal with fornication, they had to deal with tempting Christ, and especially they were murmuring you know, with each other. Devil will not leave you alone. That's why devil goes, now what? Now what you going to do, right? I mean, what are you going to do? Because that's a question that you and I have to actually ask on a daily basis. You know? Now what? You know, Sunday after church, now what? What do you do? Now what? You know, Brother Gorski, you know, Pastor Gorski from Lancaster, was preaching on Calvinism. And that was one of the most powerful preaching from the camp. It wasn't, you know, fire and brimstone type of preaching like Pastor Jin did, you know, the last one. It was actually teaching preaching. However, it had one of the most, you know, well, it had greatest influence on some of the people because it pricked people in the heart. Now what am I going to do? I actually need to study the Bible. You know, you have to study the Bible. You know, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. When you start asking your questions such as, now what? You have to study. That's what. You literally have to hit the books. It was great to talk to, you know, Brother Dakota before the service. He said he made some great commitment in his life. He committed his life to read the word of God. I mean, that's a great commitment, right? For some, it's, it's like, oh, yeah, Bible's there. You know, this KJV 1611, final authority, the word of God, it's there. But it's just there. It's like sitting on your closet. It's sitting on your bookcase. It's sitting in front of your you know, TV stand. But it's just there. Now what? What are you doing, Right? What are you doing with the Word of God? And especially because Lord has blessed you know, many of the internet ministries 
from various different Bible-believing churches. And especially us, we have like no excuse. We have countless, countless materials that you can go through. Right? Our channel alone has thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of videos. Pastor Jean, you know, Pastor Mike Shrive, you know, Pastor Kim. You have Brother Gorski, Brother Stevenson. There are a slew of materials out there. What are you doing when question comes up? You know, now what, right? Because you and I cannot, you know, scream and shout 24-7 because that's impossible. And that's not something that, you know, it's going to edify everybody. <laughs> it's good to have that zeal. But imagine if Brother Nathan, every time you see him at the church for the next two hours, he just, just all he does is run up and down. And, and when he's teaching his class, he just runs around the bases and then tell the kids to just, you know, just learn from me. No, there has to be balance. Right? There has to be balance. You know, as Christians, you need to have some knowledge and you need to have some understanding in the Word of God. I mean, if all you know is salvation, I mean, it's good so you can reach out to people, but you can't grow. It's like, you know, we have a lot of young kids here. Imagine all you were able to eat at summer camp was just milk. Everybody's eating this, you know, delicious skirt steaks, you know, Chinese food, you know, carby ribs. They're eating all this good food, ramen noodles. But you're only allowed to drink milk. Uh, they're probably going to be a revolt or something. You know, they're like, no, you know, I want to eat that. I want to, you know, enjoy the other food. When was the last time you had that kind of desire, you know, as a child of God, where I'm not just satisfied, just tasting, you know, just this, this doctrine, salvation, right? But I want to learn more about Calvinism. I want to learn more about other dispensationalism. I want to learn about tribulation, rapture, right? I want to learn about, you know, mermaids and centaur. You know, I want to learn about giants, right? I want to learn more about, you know, Anakims. You know, I want to learn more about, you know, Goliath's brother. I want to learn about Jeremiah, Isaiah. And I want to learn about people who aren't able to even marry, like one of the brother mentioned, right? Once you start, get the ball rolling, as they say, the desire replaces that empty space when you start asking, now what? No one should never ask, now what? Right? The fact that you are asking yourself, now what? It just shows you're lazy. You're lazy. You know, Brother Robert, who's a fired up, gung-ho guy, you know, from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. He preached on ants, ants, right? It was, a, it was great. Uh, I mean, if he was preaching here, he wouldn't be staying at here, right? <laughs> He'll be in front of you right now, right? Ants are busy. I mean, they're just busy. I mean, if their fellow, you know, ant dies, you know, they pick him up and then continue to do what they're supposed to do. And they don't covet other positions. Right? You know, a lot of people think about, now what? You know, a lot of times they think about, how am I going to put myself in you know, better position? How am I going to get that position? Maybe inside the church, you're like, hmm, uh, that teaching job seems pretty good. So when am I going to get it? Right? Hmm, you know. Pastoring doesn't seem that easy. It's hard, right? Like, okay, so maybe I'll just become a pastor, right? You know, let me talk to the pastor so that I could be the pastor, you know, because I could do better than you, you know? You're like, ah, pastor's wife? Uh, yeah, it's, it seems pretty simple. You know, they get some accolades here and there, right? You know, but you, you know sisters, right? You know, that's the last thing you want, you know, because you, you're going to be attacked. And Prime example is David. David's like, he should be in the battle with the other man. But he was just, you know, 
lollygagging or just enjoying himself at his palace. And then what got to him? It led him to adultery and it led him to murder. You should never be idle. You should never be like asking yourself, now what as a Christian? You have so many things to do. You, especially if you have love for the lost souls out there, you could go out and do something. No one ever told our brothers from the camp to go out and street preach. They just do it because they want to. No one tells you to pass out tracks. You just do it because you have love for the lost souls out there. Right? No one tells you to study the word of God where you, know, you could answer some of the tough questions that your coworkers are asking about the word of God. You just do it. You just want to keep yourself busy. And ants follow leaders. Ants, one of their main characteristics is they follow leaders. And if you see, you know, leaders being sold out for the Lord, doing the things of the Lord, and you just follow and you just do it. I mean, how many of you guys saw through all of our videos and teachings? I mean, everything. You haven't. Then don't, don't be like, you know what? I have nothing better to do. I don't have anything to do. I mean, especially as a Christian, you have all the time in the world to go through so many things. Instead of going through your sports scores, right? Going through watching all this sporting stuff. Why don't you study more? Instead of you know, wasting time going through some of the social media stuff, right? Why don't you spend more time in the Word of God? Instead of being lazy and just trying to waste your time by sleeping, why don't you wake up and go somewhere and spread the gospel, right? You're like, I don't know what to do. Just go to all the gas stations and start passing tracks out. You know, people are pumping gases. They have nothing better to do. Right? And nine out of 10 times, they just accept it. Yeah, they just accept it. Yesterday, I was going home and had to put some gas. And you know, that's why looks could be deceiving. Right? Kind of like yeah, those, those street racers. Uh, you hear it from miles away. Cars coming with a loud, loud muffler coming, you know. And shaved head, stocky, right? You know, maybe a gangster, maybe not. You know, maybe we should ask people who did skits who were part of the gangster, right? <laughs> Someone actually drew like a couple, you know, teardrops. I guess they know what that meant, right? You guys do know what that means, right? All right? And then his buddy was on the other side, you know, driving like Mustang GT, and this guy was driving, you know, Infinity. Just went up there and gave him a track. And of course, the friend was finished, you know, filling up the thing and then just about to leave. The guy on the other side said, thank you. You know, it's a, it's a really, it's pretty good feeling, right? When you give a track to somebody and they genuinely says, thank you. Yes. Yeah. And as he was driving off, he said, thank you again. Because as he was waiting, he was reading it, right? If you had more time, probably we could have talked a little more, but probably they had some racing to do. <laughs> and you can't feel really, you can't be really late to those racings, right? Awesome. Yeah. If someone has experience. <laughs> So it is, it is, the opportunities are there everywhere. No one should be asking yourself, you know, now what? Now what am I going to do for the Lord? There's so many things that you can do for the Lord, right? Sometimes, and I, I don't want to be like, you know, how should I say, sentimental, too sentimental, mushy mushy or whatnot, you know, because, you know, Koreans, right? Korean dads, Korean males, you, know, you have to be tough. 
you have to show no emotion at all. <laughs> you know, and probably a lot of Asian culture, right? You know, your way of saying I love you is, you know, just shaking your head, right? You know, never say it, right? I mean, God forbid if you hug, show a hug, right? You know, you're, you're known as, you know, low rank of, you know, toughest man out there. I mean, maybe some brother or sister really needs an encouragement. I mean, you could say hi. You could say how you're doing, brother, how you're doing, sister, right? And it becomes a huge encouragement. You know, Pastor Mike Shrive, you know, he shared that, right, experience or example, you know, when out of the blue, like Joanna, right, sent him an encouraging word when he was going through, you know, not current, you know, cancer, but previous one. And he was so blessed. Those little words and those little things can really bless other people, especially, you know, your brethren, your pastors and pastors' wives. Do you think, you know, pastors and pastor wives are like, you know, just superhumans? I mean, even the teachers and leaders of the church, right? They're not. They're just like you and me. They're just like someone sitting next to you, behind you, you know. They're all the same people. They all have same emotions. It's just that, you know, God saw their faithfulness. They just have a little more responsibility to do. I mean, if you are asking yourself, now what? Man, take your phone out and say, you know, I appreciate what you do, you know, teacher, preacher, you know, Mrs. Who, right? That goes a long way. And that, in return, will help you grow. It will help you appreciate. And it will help you actually pray for that person, right? When was the last time you actually pray for someone that you didn't really care for, right? Isn't that kind of impossible to pray for someone that you don't care for? You pray because you care, right? Then how are you gonna get to that point where you care about that person? Stop asking yourself now what am I gonna do? No, there are things to do, many things to do. And then as devil tempts you, to get into idolatry, covetousness, fornication, you know, tempting Christ and murmuring, get rid of all those things. Amen. You know, like Pastor Gene said, you know, nail that flesh to the cross. Yes. Keep on nailing it, keep on nailing it. You know, your flesh can be used for God. Yes. Yeah. Right? That is truth, okay? You know, I mean, everybody's like, oh, you know, flesh, flesh, flesh is bad and bad and bad, right? Honestly, like, you know, the Bible says your body is temple of Holy Ghost. So actually, you know, the Lord dwelleth inside of your body. I mean, I mean, can you believe that? Then if your, your body is the holy temple of God, even though you and I hate the flesh because of its lust of flesh, lust of the, you know, eyes and pride of life. However... You could still use it for the glory of God. Then when you're asking yourself, now what? Do something with your flesh. Amen. And, and I, somehow, Pastor Kim even talked about it yesterday too. You have to invest in your flesh. You do. When you say, now what? If you need to exercise, actually go exercise. Uh, it's, not a, it's not something like, you know, you... It's not a fitness class, but for your own good. In order to serve the Lord, you need to have healthy bodies. Yeah. In order to go somewhere for the Lord, you, you need to be well enough to go. Then, don't neglect such things as exercise and eating healthy. Don't think that, oh, I'm a Bible believer. I could eat whatever I want. Nah. You're going to get your diseases, illnesses. You're going to get your diabetes. You're going to get all that. Why? Because you're putting in wrong things to your body. You're abusing the temple of God. You're abusing, you know, your own body where you could use for God. You know, when your flesh says, it's what, three or four in the morning, and it's time to eat some pizza, a whole round of pizza, you know, and you know it's bad for you, 
and you're kind of up there in age, you're not, you know, a teenager anymore, right? Then you should just nail that in the cross, right? Right? <laughs> I mean, isn't it, isn't it ironic and isn't it also so true that late night food tastes the best, right? After a certain period of time, whether it's 10, 11, 12, I mean, if you're late, you know, if you're out, you know, like you sleep at like 3 or 4, I mean, eating at like 2 a.m., 1 a.m. probably tastes the best. But it's the worst for you. Not saying that you can enjoy that sometime in your life, right? But if that's your habit and your health deteriorates, right. you cannot blame anybody but yourself. Right. Yeah. And you abuse the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. That's why it shouldn't become your own religion. It shouldn't consume you. But when you have to ask yourself, now what? It shows that you have some time to kill or to use. Do some exercise. You might say, oh, man, you know, I just want to study the Word of God and Word of God. I do it, right? But you have to be balanced. In order to study the Word of God, in order to be alert, your body has to be alert. Your body has to be you know, in a good shape. That's why so many in a Bible-believing circle, you know, they might tackle me. You know? But with eating habits and exercise habits, they don't ever preach or they don't talk about it. Right? Some people are born big. You can't do anything about that. You're born with big bones, right? <laughs> but, but man, I shouldn't be like standing here, you know, 350 pounds, you know, next year, yeah. right? Yeah. And then every time I'm preaching, I'm huffing and like, you know, <laughs> brethren, give me a few seconds, you know. What do you know about what I'm hiding, right? I go down and grab a donut and eat and come up. And I go, and wow. I feel, brethren, you know, let's be high for the Lord, right? <laughs> you could smell, smell that donut. Probably these guys will be smiling. Oh, what's that smell? You know, it smells so good. So do not neglect taking care of the, you know, holy temple, right? And, Temple of the Holy Ghost, can you guys realize that? Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. So when, when you're lusting after somebody, that's the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? You have to nail it. You have to nail it. You have to nail that desires, right? When you're coveting after something, nail it. You know, if it goes like, now what, right? No, it's time to nail it. When, when you're about to murmur, you know, you're about to murmur against your brethren, you know, leaders or anybody else, right? Because when you have so much time, you just want to see something that's critical. That's human being, right? If, if someone's been, you know, seeing each other for a long time or people have been marrying for a long time, they're going to see and they're going to eventually notice, like, all the faults of the other person, right? However, if you don't spend time looking at other person's faults all the time, right, murmuring, then it actually kind of have a better outcome. When you spend time criticizing other brethren, pastors and pastor's wife, what happens is that when now what comes, you suddenly blurt things out that you're not supposed to. Because you wasted those time and you sinned during those time when wife and husband or parents and children, you know, friend and friend, best friend start arguing. Wow. They say some stuff that you should have never came out. Right? Husband saying something to wife. Wife saying something to husband. Children saying something to parents. Parents saying something to children. They start blurting things out. Did that come out of the blue? No. It came out because you saw, you listened, and you start thinking about it over and over. What happened to David? We go back to David. He's a Bathsheba, right? Yeah. And he was thinking. Right? You know, it, it, it could have been a better ending if you know, he was out there busy already, like Gans, right? It could have been a better ending, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil, just start running, 
right? But those things did not happen. It's like, now what? I'm a king. I owned everything. You know, I know it's wrong, but you know what? I got time to kill. Bring Bathsheba. And then what happened now, you know, even one of the servants were, God's giving him many, many chances. God's even giving you many chances. Isn't that Uriah the Hittite's wife? I mean, husband, yeah, isn't it? Sometimes through preaching, sometimes through teaching, sometimes through the word of God, sometimes just for, you know, mere different circumstance, someone comes along your way like, hmm, shouldn't you not be doing that? Hmm. If, even if it's not direct, right? Hmm. Isn't that, isn't that tobacco? Isn't that alcohol? Isn't it not good for your body? You know, they're not even safe, right? They're just normal people. They're like, hmm. Shouldn't you not talk about other person like that? Right? It all happens because you're like, now what? When there's so much and so many things to do already in your life for the Lord. Again, if you have too much time to kill, something's wrong with you. Right. Right? There's so many things to learn from the Word of God. There's so many people out there who's lost on their way to hell. Your body needs help too. Then, I don't know why anybody, including myself, could ask, now what, when I have so many things to do? Right. Right? And that includes prayer as well. When you start being like, now what? Uh, get on your knees and pray. <laughs> Literally. Man, you, you kind of need to talk to the Lord because something's missing in your life. Right? Lord, I just came down from summer camp, but I don't know what to do. I mean, get on your knees, right? I mean, Lord's going to start giving you, like, all those preachings, you know, all those great, you know, testimonies. And be like, okay, uh, yeah, I got to be like an ant, you know. Uh, I got to go out there and then start preaching. I got to go out there witnessing. I got to be more bold for the Lord. Like, you know, one of the brothers preached that, Brother Jerry. You know, I got to be out there, be bold, you know. And be like Brother Josh preaching. You know, I got to be like a sponge, right? Like little kid. I got to start absorbing things. You know, I got to start absorbing. I got to start, you know, reading the Word of God. And, you know, as Pastor Stevenson finished with, right? There's certainties of hell, right? There are millions of souls, billions on their way to hell. And what are you doing about it, right? I mean, what are you doing about it? You know, I mean, I, get, I feel ashamed, right? When I don't, I waste my time, you know, when I should be doing something for the Lord, right? But that pricks you. And as a human being, we're not perfect. And we need some jolt. We need some kicking. And we need some, you know, slap on the back, right? Yes. Like, uh, hey, wake up. You know, you got you to gotta wake up, you know. Amen. And then you got to wake up and, you know, go out there. You know, people are in prison. Spiritual prison, you gotta help them jailbreak. Yeah. You gotta help them fly, right? You know, when we sing, I'll fly away, you know, everybody was just flying. Literally, at the campsite, they were just flying, you know? Some people are flying on top of the truck, right? You know? <laughs> and then some people are just flying through the doors. Why? Because you and I know how it is, how it feels to fly away being jailbroken from our sins of the past, being jailbroken from our state of sinner, lost sinner, eventually was going to burn in hell. But Lord saved us from hell once and for all. Then, if you love the Lord, if you love you know, lost souls out there, there's no reason for you to say, now what? You know what, and you know what to do. Let's pray. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, whenever we have highs, whenever you know, we have blessings come down from you, Lord, we tend to 
hit a stumbling block or we tend to come to a road where it's not what. And there are multiple and many temptations out there and we just fall into those instead of nailing those to the cross and nailing our sinful desires of our flesh to the cross and we just go our old ways, sinful nature and fall. Lord God, I pray that everyone who's listening here, myself, Lord, help us to realize that we need to be like an ant, keep them busy for you so that there won't be any time of waste because it can lead to wicked, wicked sins, Lord, and destroy our testimony and destroy opportunity to spread the gospel, Lord. Heavenly Father, help us to still stay fired up for you in these last days where so many souls are going to hell. Help us to be that light to this dark world where we can lead someone to you, Lord. And we continue to pray for Pastor Mike Shrive and his recovery, Lord, healing. I pray that you continue to bless our ministry and be with everyone, Lord. You know everyone's needs here, Lord. I pray that you provide their needs and everyone will grow and spend their time like an ant, just worshiping you, praising you, for, and doing something for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.